Hi right guys, we're just going to try and sort this issue out. We're having apologies for that. I'll redo the introduction again once we get sorted with our viewers and who's on. Um, just waiting for Anthony to come on. Which is weird. Um, bear with me guys, sorry about this. Um, come on. Just waiting for the option to bring Anthony on camera and then hopefully we get sorted. Um, I do really apologise for this, guys. It is not looking good at the minute um, for some bizarre reason. The option is still not there. So, just... For some reason, Anthony's name does not pop up so that I can bring him onto the camera. There we go. Hey, we got sorted. Cheers, Tan. Hey, how are you doing? Hello, how are we? Got, 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 Eventually. <laughs> yeah, how are you doing, bud? You all right? I'm good, mate. How are you? I'm very good. It's Wednesday, nearly at the end of the week. Yeah. Nearly weekend. So, um, obviously, uh, just before we start, I'll just let, let everyone know. If you've got any questions for Anthony, I'll just pop them in the comments, and at some point in the video, I'll read them out to him. No holds bars, guys. No, no. <laughs> I'm sure Anthony's got some good stories for you. Possibly, possibly. So, obviously, you made your debut as a referee in Lakeside in 2013. But how did it all start for you as a referee? Uh, completely by accident, if I'm honest, mate. Uh, I won a tournament when I was 20. It was an under-21s tournament. And I couldn't defend the title the year after, so I offered to help run it. And ended up yeah. in the final. And plus doing a lot of uh, stuff at County and things like that, just helping them out. And I got noticed and asked to do like, other local tournaments and then some, uh, some of the bigger opens. And it just snowballed from there, basically. Um, I'm not going to you, you are quite a handy player and a fantastic official, of course. And you appeared, I believe it was a... Uh, picture you put on, uh, Friendship Tour in 2008, there were some great names alongside you there, including uh, Mike, Michael Smith and Ricky Evans, did you think what sort of what they've become today, did you think that at the time, what they would have become? There was a lot of potential in those those players when I played Friendship Cup, I played two years, 2007 and 2008, and the guys that were playing at that time, like you say, Michael Smith, Ricky Evans... Dan Gurney played for Northern Ireland around about then. Shane O'Connor was playing for the Republic. And Paddy and Michael Meany, players like that. Guys that have went on to have, you know, world championship appearances and have won major tournaments and, and stuff like that. So the potential was definitely there, even back then. And, uh, yeah, it was really, really good to see those guys going on and becoming a real force in the game. Yeah, yeah let's go back to that. <laughs> Um, talk us through that debut year in 2013 at Lakeside. What were you feeling walking through the door as an official? If I'm perfectly honest, the, the feeling I had that Saturday morning when I walked into the venue for the first time as an official is the same feeling I've had every other time I've walked in. And my hair was on end, I had goosebumps. It, it's, it sounds ridiculous, but the, the room has an awe around it. You walk in and you just go, wow, I'm here. Um, yeah. I think it's something that will probably always be the same for like, if you're a die-hard darts fan. You're going to Mecca, basically. And to walk in, knowing that I'm going to be on that stage, referee for some of the best players in the world, it's just, it was the most incredible feeling. It was the battle of the Gary Potter test, Thompson and Robson. How did that go? Badly. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, it was a new baptism of fire. My first game... Um, there was a bit of a, a cock up on the, the scoring. Uh, the score didn't get input properly, and 
ended up, it took me about nine darts to realise that something was wrong. Uh, stopped the game. We eventually got it fixed, but uh, Martin Fitzmaurice, who was the MC at the time, he stormed the stage to try and get it sorted. You know, it was my first game ever on, on the right side stage, so I handled it okay, I think. But uh, yeah, we got it sorted and we moved on. But it was Gary Robson I felt really sorry for because if there's going to be something that goes wrong at Lakeside, it will happen to Gary. <laughs> Um, what was your favourite match to referee at Lakeside from sort of the 2018 broad full-time as a referee? Have you got any memories of particular games that stick out in your head? My, my favourite game I've refereed, I've always said since I refereed it, was the semi-final between Jan Becker and Alan Norris. Because it went to, you know, the, the tie break at the end of the fifth set. It was a real good, good match. And I, I loved every second of it. And up until then, there was there wasn't really a, a competitor for my favourite match. Obviously, I've done seven finals and they they yeah. But up until 2019, I refereed uh, Richard Venstra and Nigel Hayden, and that went to the end of the first set as well. And it wasn't the most entertaining match in terms of averages, but it was just so much fun to referee. Really yeah. Were the previous um, games about the British Red Bulls last year, obviously this is going to be October this time. Can you see a return of events such as the World Masters and the World Championships, do you reckon, but through the WDF this time? Well, the WDF have already announced their World Masters that's going to be held in the Debonte Waver in Assen in December of next year. Or, sorry, December of this year. You forget, it's 2021 now. <laughs> so yeah, I'm buzzing. Hopefully, I'll be involved in that. Uh, Nick and Richard and the rest of the, the WDF executive are working so so hard. They they've always said they, they won't make an announcement unless there's something there to announce. They, they won't make an announcement for the sake of it. And they've announced the World Masters. They're confident, pandemic allowing, that it'll go ahead, and it will be one of the one of if not the best World Masters ever because they're they're making sure that there's chances for every player and every member yeah. of the country to be there. What was it, is it, obviously the video announcing it's unfortunate collapse this year, obviously been part of the video for, not just from 2013 as an official, you've, you know, you've been there, done the events from sort of the late 2000s as a young kid, playing, playing in these events. What was your reaction when you heard the news? I was, as every darts player on the other side of the, the divide was, I was gutted, to be honest, because it has been a massive, massive part of my life since I started playing darts in 2004. You know, I've, I've, as you say, I've been to these players as, sorry, been to these tournaments as a player first before starting refereeing. So to see these events not under the video banner, as it were, it was, it was strange, but to be honest, a lot of the the tournaments weren't run by the BDO. I think the, the, the majors, obviously, in the British Open were the big BDO tournaments. But the, the other ones, thinking about it more, realising they will live on because they're run by the, the, the member nations. But it's, it's a big part of that in history that's unfortunately been lost. Obviously, with the WBF, it's actually a return. Uh, Winmar being a sponsor, do you reckon? Or are they going to stick with the... I think it was the Gladiator boards that they had. Right at the back end of the sort of the time of the video, are they gonna do you reckon they'll go back to the windmill boards or are they sticking with the guns? I honestly couldn't tell you. Personally, my preference would be windmill because I think yeah. they go for the the best on the market. Nothing against one eighty to see they deliver a very good board, but windmill is the boards we've been playing on. Yourself and Cody Harry, we've been playing on these boards for years. Yeah. I think we, when we're uh, back end of count, sort of like the county season now, we're shouting a few home games for Humberside and the amount of players that was moaning about the boards. It, um, I had one player, the amount of scores I had to call, it was like 25, 26, um, whatever else, or just no score because of the darts falling out the board. He moaned, obviously there was a bit of a complaint about it, but yeah, he was the only one who was, who was darts fell out the board, but a lot of people have said they've put 
prefer the wind windmills and I've, I've had them from blade 3s, blade 4s, blade 5s and for me they're just probably one of the strongest boards out there. Like I say, Windmore are a fantastic company. You know, they've, they've helped me in the, my place of employment now. I'm working in a, a sports farm in Rutherglen near Glasgow called McGoldrick's and we've got one of the best start setups in Scotland, if not the best start setup in Scotland and Windmore support us with that. So I can only say good things about Windmore and again, I've always played on their boards, but like I also say, they're absolutely nothing against 180 in their board because I don't have a problem with them, I think they're good. But one more would always be my preference. Oh, definitely. Um, what do you want to say that you've got one particular event that was your favourite, but what sort of say top five of your favourite events to attend throughout the calendar year was yours? Well, the Welsh Open has always been my favourite weekend. Yeah, I mean the the camaraderie, the the party atmosphere. You're there, and it was my weekend off. I, I didn't referee the Welsh Open, and usually, usually myself, Little Richards, Marco attended a couple of times. Um, Hugh Ware is there every year. We had we had Nick there one year. Uh, the only one that hasn't been there is Charlie, and we were hoping to get him there last year. Then obviously everything went. Pear shape, shall we say? Yeah. But the, the Welsh Open definitely up there. The Dutch Open is absolutely phenomenal. The Isle of Man Open is one of my favourites. Again, James that. Hall, James <laughs> Hall, James Hall, James Hall, James Hall, James Hall, James Hall, James Hall, I remember that. Uh, that's three. The Scottish Open, I do love the Scottish A lot of people have got things to say about the Scottish Open, and yes, it's not perfect. Yes, there's no really very many places to sit down, but it's my home tournament. It's the first tournament I've ever refereed, and I love it dearly. I don't care what anyone says. And then, notwithstanding the majors, which I, I love as well, uh, I love Celsea. I, I love going to Celsea. I mean, going down there for England Opens and, and what have you, just absolutely phenomenal. So, yeah, that would probably be my top five. What about Bruce? Was that, was that <laughs> number six? God, I forgot about Brid. Yeah, I need to have a, I need to have a top six. I need, I need to put Brid in there as well. Love the British. Well, a top six so you can slot Brid in. Thanks, pal. <laughs> How often do you keep in touch with Team Ref? So obviously yourself, you've got little Richard, Marco, Nick, and Charlie, obviously, who was the newest member, but you obviously took him in like he was a brother. So how often do you keep in touch with the guys? Yeah. We're enough on a daily basis, you know, we've got a, a group chat on WhatsApp and we, we, we do keep in touch pretty regular. Um, and it, it's nice, we have the occasional like, Zoom meeting or Skype call just to, you know, see each other's faces because that's, that's nearly a year since I've seen these guys and it's, it's hard, but knowing that we can still keep in touch and talk to each other, it, it makes it a little bit easier and it's, it's always good to hear the, the rants and raves and moans and... You know, it's just, it's really good spending time with the guys. Uh, I've been asked to have, remain, have this person remain nameless, although he said you've got him tanked a few times. Uh, about the Prague story. Oh, God. This will be the missed flight then. I believe so. Uh, well, uh, maybe my second or third year at the Czech Open, which is another one of my favourites. I forgot, I need a top seven now. Uh, we I finished refereeing the, the pairs on the, the Sunday and myself, Ross, I think Ryan, a couple of others have been out for food. And I said, right, I'm gonna go in to the pub. There's this pub called The Shed, which is across the road from the venue. So we went to the shed for one or two. One or two. And I made the fatal schoolboy error of getting into a company with Paul Brown from Northern Ireland. Yeah. And Big Teeth. <laughs> who likes a drink, let's say. So one thing led to another and I slept my flight. <laughs> I've, I've, all I remember waking up the next day and thinking to myself, my God, it's bright in here. And I looked at my clock and it was like 10 past 12 in the afternoon and my flight was at like 20 to 11. So my flight was like over Bournemouth or something and I'm still lying in my bed. So that, that was one of the most stressful days I've ever had on the dark. 
but on the plus side, they gave me an extra day in Prague, so silver lining. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, is refereeing still something that you'd go back into, whether it be with the WDF or if you ever got asked for, per se, like what Hugh Ware's doing, where he'll do the UK Open and things like that with the PDC? Is that something you want to jump back into? I've, I've always, I've never, never given up refereeing. You know, even after the, the BDO, the, the, the clever ties with the BDO, I was still doing open tournaments here and there. and what WDF events and, and what have you, so that will always continue. If the WDF want me as a referee, I'll be refereeing for the WDF. And yeah. at the future, you know, if the PDC were to come calling, who knows? I, I would never say never. And it, it is one of my darting refereeing ambitions to referee the Premier League and the Hydro and Wargo. So that would just be phenomenal. But we'll take it one day at a time. And at the moment, I'm still committed to helping the WDF Declan see the sees the Premier League Scotland get him on. <laughs> we'll move on from the darts. Now we'll talk about other sports. Obviously, you know football. Big question: Is it Celtic or Rangers? Celtic, but I'm a fan of Queens Park as well. They're, they're a local team to me, and yeah. they, play, they play at Hamden Park, which is literally over there. It takes me 15 minutes. So, uh, so I've been to see Queen's Park more than I've been to see Celtic in the past few years, but uh, obviously I still like to keep, keep my eye on Celtic, see how they're doing, but uh, aye, I'm, I'm a Spiders fan now, I'm on the Queen's Park. <laughs> so if I'm um, Scotland, who would you take? Who would you take? Who would you take? Who would you take? Not really. Uh, obviously I, I watch English football, I keep a, a keen interest, but I can't really say I, I follow or support a team. Just, I appreciate good football, and as long as there's no nonsense, like what there is with the old firm, which is a lot of the reasons why I don't really bother with it anymore. I just, I just enjoy watching good football. Who do you think you're going to get this high? It's weird to see Man United back at the top of the table after so long in the doldrums. Yeah, it's <laughs> It's, it is, uh, it's, it's where they, they should be, I feel like there's so much history and prestige with the team, it's, it's nice to see them back in the, the upper echelon, I feel like, where they belong, and uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a, a very interesting end to the season. Obviously, on the sport of cricket, I mean, me and you have had some chats about cricket in the past, um, have you seen the Steve Smith incident? I haven't actually. I've not really been keeping an eye on any cricket stuff at all. I, I do enjoy cricket. I love love watching the Ashes, especially. But I, I don't really keep on top of it that much. I've heard stuff going on, but I've not really seen much of it to be honest. Yeah, it was it was uh, doing what Steve Smith does when he pretends to take to he sort of does shadow batting at the crease when he's fielding, and then he uh, decided to have a little rub of the uh, batting crease to put his, the batsman off. A few, uh, few of the English have hammered him a bit, saying it's cheating. A few ex-players actually have gone out on Twitter and said it's sort of not cricket, so to speak. And But, you know, if it, he doesn't care as long as he eats a ton. Steve Smith's always going to be Steve Smith. And you, you won't change him now, definitely not. But, uh, yeah, that's a discussion to be had, whether it is cheating or not, if it's just one of his little Smithisms, if you like. But, yeah, strange one. Obviously, we've got England who are starting the ten-week tour, Sri Lanka, and what have you. They've got a, a broad tour, which is great. Will you be keeping the scorecards for that one? Oh, absolutely, yes. Like I say, I, I don't watch it that often, but I do like to keep an eye on results and that coming through. So, it's as a Scotsman, it's probably the one sport I support England at is cricket. So, yeah. Yeah, I'll be I'll be watching with vested interest. That's good. During this lockdown, then. Um, Netflix series. Have you been binging any? Uh, I've binged a couple, to be honest. I, I watched Breaking Bad from start to finish and thoroughly enjoyed it. That was the first I'd watched it, to be honest. And uh, the occasional movie here and there, but the, the one series I always go back to is still game. I, I watched that from start to finish at least three, four times a year. Just, I love it. It's, Best comedy show. One Netflix series. I always go back to it. Brooklyn Nine Nine. Oh yeah, I love that. It is hilarious. 
A lot of people don't like it, but I don't care. It's funny. Andy Samberg, that's all I've got to say. But um, we'll move on to our quick fire rounds of some things like Pepsi or Coke, you know, um, Sun or Snow, holiday type thing. So we'll crack on. KFC or Nando's? KFC. Vodka or gin? Gin. Whiskey or rum? Rum. Tea or coffee? Tea. Favourite band or artist? Dave Wendell. Ooh, shout. Favourite player's walk on? Dave <sighs> Hanky. See, for me, <laughs> any of the dancing lads, so if that's Devin Peterson, Peter Wright. Peter Wright just topped it for me. Fair crown of the world champs. Coming on. Probably As the Grinch, with the little gloves on. And the face mask. Uh, just... Absolutely topped it. Either that or the fact that I think you played Ian White one time. You've got Ian White dancing. I mean, Ian White dabbing. Mm. Peter White dancing. But I think BDO. I think Wolfie. Just the fact he starts loving pens into the crowd or whatever it is he throws to people. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably be the same, Wolfie, if he didn't beat me 5 0 about half an hour ago. <laughs> Did he, has he just give you a pump? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Big start. Um, Gardens or Indian? Ooh, Chinese. Best mate on tour? All the Scottish guys, like and the refs, probably Ross, Ryan, Gary Stone, and all my team ref boys. Favourite after she did? Paco Rabanne, Ultraviolet. Music. <laughs> oh, God. Although the Snapchats I've seen of you singing in the show, it could be anything. Yeah, we'll leave it at that, I think. <laughs> anything that's probably in, in it, really, let's be honest. Yeah, pretty much. Um, your favourite all-time player? Oh, God. I'm a referee, I'm not many have favourites. Uh, my favourite all-time player is uh, the late, great Alistair Forrester from Scotland, who passed away a couple of years ago. Big gentleman. Um, Played for Scotland a few times, played at the World Championships as well, and yeah, gave me a lot of support when I was coming through, so definitely him. Night in or night out? Night out, especially out. I was going to say, if you said night in, I'd have been disappointed in you. Friends or Big Bang Theory? Big Bang Theory. Boxing, Boxing Day Test Victory or 5 0 Whitewash of the Aussies? Oh, in Five mil whitewash, definitely. Favourite song right now? So the one you just have to keep repeating over and over again. I'm not a big fan of modern music, to be honest. So my favourite song always has been Animal by Death Leopard. The one I keep repeating on my phone at the minute is Giants, Dermot Kennedy. Mm. I think it's just something different. I mean, obviously, Ed Sheeran's released something new and just sounds the same. Don't get me wrong, he's got a great voice. He just seems very repetitive. Um, although Joe Corey's head and heart, I do I do find myself popping a bit to that. <laughs> All right, if I take it back. If, if I'm talking all the dreams I have Fleetwood Mac. Oh, that's okay. Absolutely, yes. Right, favourite film? Oh. I, asked, I asked Corinne this last night and... If, we, if we're going off one, you can just watch thousands of times and it'd still be amazing. Rocky 4. <laughs> Rocky 4. I think man's Happy Gilmore. Oh, yeah, it's, it's up there, definitely. Happy Gilmore, Longest Yard. Any, most Adams. I would agree with that, definitely. That's that quick play you done. You got any more online games tonight? Yeah, I've got another three, I'm just against a, a few of the Scottish lads, so I, I played okay against Adams, I think I averaged just a shade under 60, which for me is good, so... Yeah, I was going to say, because I think you've been struggling, haven't you, with arthritis and stuff, so... It's, it's slowly but surely coming back, so we'll, we'll keep going and see how it goes. Hey, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to Frid, though, this year, seeing you up on that karaoke. I can't wait. I really hope it goes ahead. It's going to be nice to be back. Yeah, I do. I've, bu I've booked up already. The room's booked. It's ready. <laughs> Raring to go. But 
Arnold <laughs> Cole's going to be there. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, and that concludes this evening's edition. Thanks, Anthony, for coming on. I really appreciate that, buddy. Problem at all, mate. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure with you, my mate. Good man. Thank you. You take care, mate. And um, thank you for the guys who viewed it to watch it. Stay tuned for Friday when I will be speaking with Gary Thompson. Have a good evening, everyone. Anthony, thank you so much again, mate. Thanks, mate. Thanks, See you later. Bye. Bye.